Good morning! This is Angela with Dogwood Paper Arts coming to you from my little studio in Sweet Home, Oregon. Welcome to my channel. Feel free to check it out. I am going to change some things around a little bit in my studio. So, um, Not in my studio, on my YouTube. Um, I have too many playlists. I want to shorten that way down to about six, maybe. Anyway, I wanted to share with you this little package I got from Maria's Miscellany Miscellany on Etsy. Take a screenshot. All that. Okay, done. Anyway, um, this was beautifully wrapped. I had filmed this yesterday and um, anyway, <laughs> that one's a goner. So I'm going to show you what I got from her. These are the little gift I got with it with some little cards. Wouldn't this be great in a fairy journal or um, even a nature journal? I think that'd be so neat. I love, love, love old cards. So thank you so much, Maria. I appreciate it. And this one, you can't tell, but it has sparklies all over it. So that would be really pretty too in a junk journal. You could put it in the signature. It'd be really neat. You could cover this part, but perfect in a, in a journal. And here, look, it's a chicken. I love chickens. Very, very pretty. Best wishes while you're ill. How wonderful. There's so much you can do with these old cards. So what I ordered, this is something I ordered. This was a little gift from Maria. Let me put it over there. It came all wrapped up in this beautiful purple. She did such a pretty job of wrapping it. I ordered, and this is Gail Augustinelli's fault that I went shopping because she was organizing her um, one of her bins and well she came across a bunch of envelopes and she, I think it was her that linked over to this shop so anyway thanks Gail I love them I love this one look Haynes Hobby House you see that Eureka Hobby Eureka Importing we love this envelope as journalers. This lets us know that in 1957, they existed. So anyway, it's just a whole slew of old, very, some very old, some in the 50s. Um, I won't say in the 50s is very old because I was born in the 50s. Um, but some are first day um, stamps and some are not. And anyway, I thought that I would um, open these up carefully if I can. And I'm going to scan them or maybe I'll just do the fronts. I don't know. If some of them open, I will open them. Look at this one. Isn't that a beautiful envelope? And I'm going to scan them and put them in my Etsy shop. I'm hoping I can get some time to do digitals here pretty soon. Look at this one. That's a yummy one. Look at the edging. After five days, return to Valentine Martin. Mr. W. A. Green, Chester, New Jersey. Aren't these just so cool? I love them. They are absolutely awesome. Um, they don't come with letters in them. It'd be cool if they all did. But um, I definitely, oh my gosh, this is 1923. My mama was born in 1923. 1924, 1922, 29, 36. 
Official dedication, $41 million new Union Terminal, March 31, 1933. <clears throat> this one has some, a really nice window in it. Perfect. First day of issue. First day of issue. This one has something in it. Probably just information, maybe, on the first day of issue. Oh, Dr. A.W. Parker. Scott Stamp and Coin. So it's whoever issued the first day of issue sent information to. And uh, so anyway, I just thought these were very cool. December 31st, 1955, celebrating 100 years of service, St. Peter's, Missouri, post office. This one's from Austin, 1945, 1920, 1912, look at that one, cool. Butter, eggs, poultry, pork, calf, calves, and game. Very cool. Anyway, thank you, Maria. You got those out so fast. I was surprised. I forgot I ordered them because I thought, oh, well, it's going to take a while before they get here. This was the envelope she sent, and I thought, you know, that washi tape on there is really cool, even with the yellow in the background. So I may cut that off of there and um, reuse it in a junk journal. I think that would be cool. Okay, I wanted to share that with you. So today, what are we doing? What, you didn't bring a craft? Oh, oh, it's up to me. Oh, oh, I see how we are. Okay, so I got this idea from, let me get my tablet on here. <gasps> Come back here. Oh man, I tried it too hard. And, uh, from Natasha at Treasure Books. And it's this one right here. DIY perfect gift for paper lovers tutorial. And it is, um, there's a commercial. And it is um, on making one of these little doodads. DIY perfect gift for paper lovers tutorial. Okay. Right there, see? I'll link it below. I'll, I'll link over to her shop. I don't know if I'll link this one, so write that name down. Okay. Because when I get to linking stuff, oh, oh dear. Okay, so she made these really cool um, uh, little notebooks that, like for gifts and stuff. And um, I have made mine different than she did. Um, it's similar. My first one was very similar, so let me show it to you. So it's an ephemera holder that you can send out. I added some little elements here that I had left over paper. This is not just a flip up, it's a pull out that has more stuff in it. Isn't that cool? And then back here is another pocket. So I'm going to slip this into that. This is made with just 12 by 12 um, papers. And you'll notice each one of these sections is a little bit smaller than the next. And there's only three sections that make up a total of what? I don't know how many pages. Um, so anyway, now on this section, she did it different. She um, paper clipped her stuff in, and I have um, made a side uh, tuck. And then you could do the same thing over here, make something on it. And this is the center page. I think she did her center page as a pocket. It was either the center or this one. Um, it, this one. I don't remember which one. You'll have to check out her video because it's really good. And she has 
measurements and directions. So mine is not really a tutorial. Mine's a, a, a crafty Saturday video um, that I'm hope I've prepped so it's a little short. So um, I was thinking if it's a gift for somebody, you could leave these a little longer and hang down out of the journal a bunch of beads on here that they could use to put in their journal. So here's this page. You could clip things onto here with a paper clip. Again, I just decorated my side tuck. And she didn't use side tucks in hers. And I've just put ephemera in it. I have also placed a side pocket over here. And then back here she used book pages to make a triple pocket. It was very cool. But I have just made a three-tiered pocket. And then back here is another pocket that you can put longer things maybe. So that is what I have done. And I'm just using an old scrap pad of paper that I've had. Um, it's by... Um, <laughs> I can't remember now. Sorry, I think I cut the cover up because I'm going to use it, going to use it for something else. Oh, but I, but I still, it's this paper. Whoops. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Double-sided papers. Classic K Charlotte. Um... Hang on. Here we go. K and C Company. K and Company. So it's an old paper pad, but it's sure a beauty. But I cut up the cover so I could use this for something else. Um, make a nice little notebook. Okay. So we got those things out of the way. Let's get started on this. This one that I'm going to make today. I'm not giving you measurements or anything. If you want those, you need to go over to Tasha's video and watch it. But don't do that until you finish here so you can see what's different about mine. Okay? Please, 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 please stay with me. I'm going to use this. It's the envelope maker, but we're not going to make any envelopes. So, let's get started on... My, on my version. So we have our front cover here. I'm just going to paste this on there. Now I'm not going to give you dimensions, but I am going to tell you that this piece here is a full 12 inches this way. And then I cut mine at 8 this way. So it's a uh, it's a uh, Sorry, it's 12 inches by 8 inches, okay? And then each one I cut just a little bit smaller so it left an edge around it. So you could see each successive layer. So let's start here and put this on the front because I know I want this here. That's right side up. So Oh, I forgot to ink this one. I'm so sorry. I tried to be all prepared, too. Well, this is how you ink. <laughs> but this is not a tutorial. There are a lot of ways to ink. But it gets rid of that super white edge on there. Which I think, you know, helps in the keeping of um, kind of a um, vintage feel to it. This was not my favorite. I do like stripes, but it was pretty stripey. Real thin stripes. But it would go. I mean, it all matches. It's, it's great. It's, I love this paper. I think I bought two pads of it. My glue is being naughty. Let's get that on there before that little bit of it dries. I've rounded all my corners 
to a quarter inch rounder with the crop crop a dial thing, the corner chomper. Okay, let's see if we can open that back up. And let's shake it up. Okay. So here is page one. And you're going to say, how'd she do that? Well, I'm going to tell you. Let's glue this one down first. And we'll see if our glue works. <laughs> I hope it does. Oh, don't do it there, Ange. No, no, no. Naughty girl. It's got some more glue stuff in there. It gets little glue goobers in it. So sometimes you really have to squeeze it, and sometimes you can squeeze that glue goober right out. But other days like today, you cannot. Okay, so let's put the sun here. And I have left a little bit of area all the way around it just for show and for spine's sake. Okay, so now I'm going to show you over here how I did that pocket. I, you need, oh, I already cut this. I'm going to show you on this. Um, you need two pieces of paper, front and back, that are just slightly smaller than the page itself. Now, the reason I added this is twofold. Um, I added it, one, for a, a tuck right here. Let me get a piece of... Oh, hello! So I'd have a tuck here. And um, the other reason is, is putting things in and out of this envelope I was afraid it would get weak, so that is why I did that. Okay, so I'm going to cut this piece out first. We're going to cut this piece with our envelope cutter. What you're going to do is line this edge up right on the edge of this. Mine is blue. I don't know what color yours is, but... You're going to line it up right there on the edge of the paper and punch it so you have your first one. Flip it over, line this edge right up on this edge of this blue, the very back of it that you can see there, and punch it. Then what I did was I, this might sound complicated, and I'm sorry if it does, but this works for me. So what I did next was put this under my ruler. You probably can't see that very well right there, can you? Let's go here. I put this down, and then I put my ruler down. Now you could just cut this, but I find it's a little difficult to get in there with scissors. And I just lined everything up with that bottom of the, um, the curve there. Same way over here. And then I drew a line. Okay. So you need to draw a line that you can see. And then I use this. Now, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, about how this board has this wire that runs across here. What I'm going to do is line this pencil line up on the cutting line. And I'm going to start this on a line, one of my centers, right on a line. And I'm going to end somewhere close to a line that comes this way. Okay, and I'll, 
it'll be kind of self-explanatory here in just a minute. So then you move this where this roundy part lines up with one of those lines. And then you have to line that wire up. It's a little complicated, but this works for me, and I really like that. <laughs> so this is lined up here. You're going to cut this way to just before that line, and that cuts through all your paper without cutting through the sides. And that makes that little pocket. So let's apply this to this little envelope. Oops, not that side. And I want red side up. And you see that it, it lines up pretty darn good. Um, you'd have to be pretty way off to get it to where it didn't line up. So I'm just going to grunge it up a little bit. I knew I hadn't grunged this one up. So this, um, it helps strengthen, because you can see that that could tear so easy right there. So I'm going to glue this on three sides. Here, around here, and here. Then it'll have a tuck. So, anyway, it's hard not to make it sound like a tutorial, but really, she has an excellent tutorial. She always writes hers out and everything, which is really cool, because then you can take a screenshot of her stuff if you want to um, follow the directions later when you take it to your craft room, and then you don't have to back up the video all the time and replay parts of it. Apply that. Now mine is a little bit smaller than this and that's okay. That does not bother me at all. So now we have, hello, a tuck here and we're going to have a pocket back here. So let's apply this pocket. Now you can see on mine I originally just reinforced the back corners here. Oh, we need to round our corners up there. One fourth inch. When you got a curve like this happening and you want to round, put this the unrounded edge against this part. Or if you're going this way, put it against this part. And that'll keep your corner rounding with the others. Okay. So originally that's what I was doing was reinforcing it. And uh, I thought, well, make one of those cool things you learned how to make. Hard to squeeze this glue. I might have to get out my barely art glue. I'm still trying to glue the top closed. Do you see that? It really is better if the glue works. We might have to do a lesson on cleaning our glue today. It's really very easy. It just takes time, you know, to get all the icky glue out of the nozzle. So I do need to clean it though. Okay, so line that up similar to this one. Not that you're going to see it once this is all on. Let's see. So 
sometimes you can shake those little things up and they'll mix back in. Okay, so now we're ready to put our pocket down here. And I have all my pieces cut out over here, so let me bring them over. Okay, here's the pocket for not there. Is this the pocket for here? I don't know. Oh, this way. This is the pocket for here. So I have a little bit of area around each edge. Let's see if it works. If not, we're going for another glue. This is the same glue bottle. And you can see it starts to work. And I purposely left this side not rounded. If you're wondering. And the reason I did that was so that it would match up with this corner here. Okay, I need to find my towel. Usually it's right behind me, but oh, here it is. So we can sop up our glue as we go. And let's see. I'm going to put the pin in that for a second. Okay, while we look at this next part, which is this one. This is the what I made to slide into here. And on this one, I'm not going to put anything up here. Uh, the only thing I could think that maybe would go up here would be like an envelope with a side tuck on it. So we might do that up. Oh, I made a belly band for it. Never mind. She shan't. Get it together, girl. So I've made pockets. One to put here. And these are just, a, a, it's a place to put ephemera. Oh, look, my pocket is too big. I wonder if this one is too. Yes, it is. Oh, because I had to cut this down after I'd already cut these. So I'm not completely ready. But I do need to take a little bit off right there. And just a little bit off of that one. You don't need to see me slicing and dicing over here. Let's see if that fits now. It will when I get this in. One fourth inch. Let's make sure it fits. We don't want it sticking out. I'm going to cut just a slight hair more off of it. I'd rather the pocket was smaller than larger. Okay, it should fit now. And it does. It's just a little bit smaller, which is fine by me. That works. Miss Libby. It's my black lab. Came to say hello. Are you here to say hello? You are? I wish I could see you because you're so beautiful. Let's see if we can do this. No, can't. I've got my camera set up so it's on the table only. Sorry girl, but you can get out of the garbage. She thinks uh, paper bits are lots of fun. Okay, let's ink up that side. I already inked the others. Not going to round any corners on this one because these are nice straight edges. And I'm flipping this paper over. Just for color. And then we'll 
I'll put it, I don't know, what do you think? Right about there? You just kind of have to think about where you want it. Trying to keep it even. Which it's not. Okay. So then what I did was I guess I made a belly band for up here. And let's flip it over maybe to this side. That doesn't look right. Cut right there though, does it? Let's go ahead and do this. And I need to cut that one a little bit too. Because I forgot that I'd cut this down a little bit. Okay. So just glue the sides. Now on my belly bands, I always try to give them just a little extra depth on the sides, width on the sides. Because I don't want them ripping off. And there we go. So now we have a really cool belly band right here. So that'll hold things in. We got a pocket and a pocket. Now on the front you might want to decorate it with something different. You know, it could be a side pocket here. Um, if we have time we'll come back and maybe do that. But I wanted to explain this to you, why it's so much smaller than this big pocket. The reason I made mine smaller Hey, get out of the garbage, you. Is so that it would fit nice and uniformly down along the bottom of this line and not get hung up on the corners and tear the paper. So, coffee drink time. Oh, one more sip. Oh, that's good. Okay, let's go to the next page, which is this one. That's the center page. Oh, I did um, make this pocket to go right here. We want to make sure we get those flowers upright. So I'm going to put that right there. I don't think I'll put a thumb hole in this one. Although it does make it easier to get into, doesn't it? Let's put a little thumb hole in it. I find my centers just by gently holding that and giving that just a little pinch. And it kind of shows me where my center is. Kind of. I still make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> and I forgot to ink this one. I'm a dingleberry here, I guess. Okay. But it's okay. So it took me um, just, you know, um, cutting things out and inking. Uh, it took me about an hour to do all that last night, but it uh, it was relaxing hour. It wasn't stressful or anything like that. Um, it was just an hour of crafting and thinking about where I wanted to put pockets and stuff like that. So now we have that one. Let's go to here. This is where I'm putting my side tucks. Tanya put um, paper clips on hers and I love it. It's absolutely adorable. And if I can find some paper clips, I have some really cute ones, some owls and some bees. And Oh, we have some little Tim Holtz ones too that would be really adorable. So apply your side tuck. I'm going to remove this piece from the bottom. So that I can get this on there good. And then 
we have a slip-in pocket. Isn't that cool? So this would be a great um, Christmas gift if you had a crafter or um, maybe maybe somebody I don't know collects um, old business cards or maybe they collect stamps or you know there's all sorts of things but if they're junk journal makers like a lot of us are then this would be a perfect ephemera holder wouldn't it so let's just go ahead and put that right there now you can see it has that little edge around it and what is really cool about that is that it just kind of all shows your layering and it's just really beautiful you know it okay so that brings us to the center page now this one it's cut shorter but I left it longer and then um, turned this up and then I always cut this little piece in mine so that it folds better for me Tanya didn't cut hers um, she leaves hers complete and I'll tell you she gets her folds so beautiful that they, they don't poke out or anything and it, she just amazes me Tanya sorry Natasha <laughs> I've been watching so many crafters have I been calling her Tanya I am so sorry it's Natasha and um, she just really does a fabulous job she's quite amazing um, she has a lot of really super good I've watched a lot of her tutorials I used to watch her all the time um, and then of course I got my own channel and then I got you know you start watching all the uh, famous people and you know pretty soon you're just <laughs> I can get wrapped up in videos all day long to be honest with you okay now there's nothing on the back of this page if you wanted to put something back there it would be a good place to do it see how that is let's see okay now these are actually a really good place to put those paper clips let me see if I have a paper clip here I don't know if I do or not not ever sure where I put that kind of thing. I have drawers back here, in case you're wondering. No, I thought it might be there, but... Oh wait, maybe it's in this drawer down here. No, of course not. That's where all my pencils are. I need to sharpen pencils. Um, let me see if I have a Tim Holtz one over here. That's within reach. There's that. Oh, here's these. Look at those. Those are very cool. So you could use something like that. And then I have some really tiny ones. Are they in here? And then I have these too. So those would be good page markers. I'm not sure how they go on. Like that. I don't want to rip it. Um, I have some really teeny tiny ones somewhere. They're apparently not in here. Okay. So let's use these two. So on this center page since you have pockets in here you could actually clip this on the side for ephemera that you might want to put inside here or if you wanted you could clip it at the top well let's not clip them on right now okay so we flip that we've done this page now we're back here to the very last page. 
Now I've done a little bit different pocket for back here, so let's get rid of all this other. There we go. Whoops. Flip it over. For this page, I have cut one of these. And then I cut another one. Now you can um, layer, stack the layers if you want, or you can put them all in the corner together. And then I made this one. So it's a three tier tuck in. And I see that I forgot once again to ink it up. How about that? I was really tired last night. <laughs> Oh, this is the first morning I have slept in till 4 o'clock in, I don't know, 10 or 12 days, maybe. Been getting up at midnight, 1, 1 1.32. Been driving myself nuts. And I used a corner chomper on this. It's a scallop corner chomper. Just to make it look a little different. I've left this side straight and curved this side to match the paper, the folder. So let's start here. Just like that. And we'll put this one down. I'm leaving a little edge on each side. And then let's do our next one. Just glue on two sides. Boy, I sure miss going to the bookstore. We used to go every Sunday. That was, and then we'd go out to eat. It was sure nice in those free, free days in America. <laughs> oh gosh. And then I have this one that I'm going to put right here. So it's a nice little triple stack that has some nice side tucks in it. And I've left just a little layering there showing, just for fun. Just because I kind of like the look of it, like it's a stack. And then, this goes back in here, like this. And that brings us over to here on our last page. This one was a long piece of paper and I hole punched it. Or, sorry, I put a thumb hole punch in it and it's off. But first what I'm going to do is put glue up these sides. Okay, now I'm going to glue this piece down and I'm going to leave it open back here. That's why there's a thumb hole. Now you could do it as a side tuck as well if you wanted. But mine's going to be an open pocket at the top. There we go. I'm going to leave a nice opening there in case I want to tuck in some longer ephemera pieces. And then this one is going to go right here. 
and we have two triple pockets. One, two, three. One, two, three. Works out really nice, doesn't it? Okay, so there we go. And then we have this pocket to put um, maybe pieces of paper in that we want to fold over. Um, maybe you want to put in, um, I don't know, some old uh, newspaper or, you know, some book pages for their journaling, things like that. That could go here. So I have not made a pocket to slip in there for that reason. And then, like I said, I left this longer so that things could get tucked in here that are longer than these pockets that you might want to use for embellishing your book. So let's go back to the very beginning. I'm going to remove this piece for a moment. And we're going to line these guys all up. I cover my ink. I'm going to poke a pin in my glue. Hope I don't poke it in my finger. Do you do that? Man, I do. <laughs> oh, that hurts. I'm going to line these all up. I'm going to find my all right there. I have some string. Now you could use any color you wanted. Um, where's my needles? Oh, right there. You could use any color. Um, but I think this works good. I'm just going to leave it attached. I'm going to find my big fat needle because I really like using that one. It's quick and easy. I don't even think you need your all for this, but it will make it easier, I suppose. Just going to string that. And let's see. You don't really have to clip this or anything. The most important thing is just to line it up. You know, because you wouldn't want it looking super wonky. Like this piece needs to come up just a hair. You want it to kind of have a beautiful uniformity. And then you find your center. Now on this one your center is uh, four inches because it's an eight inch thing. So if you want to be more uniform about it, just set that on there. And we know we need one at four. Not with that pencil, you don't. We need one at four. And it looks off because this piece is off. And then you want to come down, I don't know, I'm going to come down one and a half inches. And then I'll come up one and a half here. Okay? Quick and easy. And then let's poke our holes. There you go. Going through the center. Yes, going through the center. <laughs> I just I had to stop and think. Am I doing this right? Whoops. Oh boy, I let it get out of control, didn't I?
There we go. And then, let me get my string all around here. When you go to put this in, pull this piece, not super tight because you don't want to tear your paper, and then poke that through. It's so that you don't run it through the string itself, because if you do, that makes it hard to tighten it up and it'll come loose. And it's just not that great. Okay, that's a little long, but I'm not going to worry about it. Just make sure you are tight out here. You go over there. You come over here. Once one's on both sides, go ahead and tie it. I'm going to go one that way, and one that way. Okay. So there's a nice little lump in the middle. Now if you wanted, you could come back and decorate this front. You could do all kinds of things with the spine. And you can come back and decorate your folder. I just decorated mine with um, bits and pieces that were left over. Let's see what we have here. So I just kind of went through it and found a piece. I like this one. It has music on it. But I need to cut it down a little bit because it's really just a little too big there. Although if I put it like that it's not. But yeah, it's too big. So I'm going to cut it down just slightly. You could tear them. Tearing them is always good. And I would ink them up if you've already inked the rest of your album. Glue it down. Oh, look at that stinky glue. You can see I'm going to be cleaning tips today. I had some extra tips, but I cannot find them. I probably have them sitting in water <laughs> somewhere. Whoops, there is music on this one, and there are words. I'm not going to line it up. There's lines in this paper, so I don't want to line it up with that. And then I'm going to put a couple little pieces in here. It's a nice little piece. I'm just going to put one here. So anyway, you get the idea. Um, we're not going to go through and decorate this whole album together, or um, ephemera holder together. I just wanted to give you some little ideas. Or you could go back through and decorate it with all kinds of goodies. Fabrics and things like that. It would be very cool no matter what you do because it's just a it's just a cool little thing don't you think so so I'm just going to put this like that just kind of a decorative element on there and uh, let's put one over here on the pocket I think we'll cut it off right here Oops, not like that. And then I think we will round the edges because the pocket is rounded. And then you could find a fun little word to put on it. Um, there must be some words here close by. You could put newspaper behind it. That would be cool.
But the one thing I love about these is that um, they you can really use up uh, several 12 by 12 sheets of paper here with this. Um, if you're trying to kill some paper pads, this would do it because they are awesomely um, easy to make and um, yeah very easy to make we'll put a fun little element over here I think we'll round it so you don't have to go overboard on decorations I think that's part of the thing that I do is that I go overboard on my decorating and really you can see that you don't have to because this looks lovely just with elements from the paper on it so yeah so anyway what's everybody doing today I uh, don't know what we're going to do today. Probably stay home because <laughs> of the Omicron going around. What the heck, you know, it's out there. That one is about the same length. I want to cut it off the same size. So I'm going to give it a little mark. Come over to my cutter. Now I have a second little element to put somewhere. And you could use different colors and um, you can put butterflies in here. But I just, I just really find these fascinating little books. Almost put it on the back of that page. Okay, so there we go. Just fun. You could put stamps on them. You could put a little tiny pocket. We already have pockets on it though. So let's just put another fun element on it. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Needed something just a little bit different. You could put a, a flower on it. it. The possibilities really are endless. Uh, tags, words, all kinds of goodies. Let's see if I can round those up. I'd rather it look like a label than uh, anything else. I think we'll do that. Now this is pretty clean cut. Um, it would be fun to make it a raggedy one. Um, I think I put on somebody's <laughs> notes that I, on somebody's comments that, because we needed to, to say what, what was the one thing that we would like to learn how to do and mine was to be able to leave shabby things shabby because I have a hard time with that. I love to watch how uh, Tina at Shabby Dabby Doo Dot does it because she leaves her um, edges shabby and stuff on all her on her um, lace and stuff and I love how it looks but I just for some reason I always have to cut it all off straight. So, I don't know.
No, that doesn't look right now. We could put it just in there. Cut it off. Straight. It's getting tiny. There we go. It's not going to stick down with ink, Angela. So there we go. So have fun. Create one of these. Fill it full of ephemera. Like this one. And this piece of washi here washi sticker just uh, here's uh, Tim Holtz cut out just a little advertising card more Tim Holtz cutouts things that I've cut and put into other journals and then more in here this is um, wildflowers and ephemera See, I think this pocket I just made a little bit too big. Here's just a fun element. In here I've just added a few little cards. And if we had our um, thing on here, we could just put in some extra papers if we wanted. We can lay those down and that would be better. And then we have more little things in here. Postcards and little advertising cards. And here we have postcards. These are Tim Holtz ones, I believe. I should have rounded this corner. I don't think I can do it now. Um, and then back here we have just some more little advertising cards and things like that and off cuts from other things now on this one I made it so that you could put the longer pieces say you wanted to give this paper away with this journal then I would just put these extra pieces back here that fit and the ones that don't fit I think I'd just put them into pockets like that. They're kind of decorative until the people use them for something else in the journal. So there we go. And then on this one I left these longer so I could add a few beads to them that the new owner say could take off and use somewhere else to make embellishments in the journal. So very cool. A lot of good ideas there. So thank you, Natasha, for um, putting out that great video. It was a lot of fun. And I sure appreciate your um, creativity. It's really awesome. And uh, that's all I have for today. Thanks for joining me. I hope you all have a great day. And I will talk to you later. Bye.